In this video, I'd like to explain what management science is and what we'll cover in this course. First, what is management science? It's application of quantitative and mathematical models to improve decision making in business. Basically, it's a set of tools that help you make decisions in business, and these tools involve using math and numbers. There are other names for management science. These terms are similar with emphasis on different aspects. Operations research has more to do with the math behind the models as opposed to the applications. Decision sciences emphasize decision making. Quantitative analysis is a term that is used in different fields. It basically means quantitative modeling, uh, but in finance, it could mean more like financial engineering. And in chemistry, it might mean something close to analytic chemistry. And business analytics emphasizes the data collection and statistical analysis. What do we mean by a model in this class? Models are representations of real objects or situations. When we say mathematical model, it means we use a system of symbols and mathematical expressions to represent a real-life situation. To make this more concrete, I'd like to discuss two simple examples, break-even analysis and optimization. I think you've all been exposed to break-even analysis, so we'll start with that. Here's a break-even analysis example. This company, Nowling Plastics, uh, can sell plastic media storage cases, like you know, CD cases, DVD cases, for $5 per unit. To set up the production line to manufacture the storage cases costs $3,000, and the labor and the material costs per unit is $2. Here you're given two values for the cost, $3,000 and $2. These are different kinds of costs. $3,000 is a fixed cost, meaning it's the cost incurred regardless of how many units are produced. And $2 is the unit variable cost that's attached to each unit that is sold or produced. And we have the $5 per unit, the selling price. We're going to answer two questions. A, how many storage cases need to be sold to break even? That is not lose money. Uh, B, how many storage cases need to be sold to make a profit of $2,400? Now, profit depends on how many units are sold or produced. So we're going to let X represent that volume, sales volume in units. And, and the profit will be the function of that X. As you know, profit is revenues minus the cost. So that is the money coming in minus the money going out. And the revenue uh, is just a selling price times the number of units sold. And the cost is a sum of the fixed cost and the variable cost, where the variable cost is unit variable cost times the number of units. Combining the terms that have x in them, like this one, and then this one, and then separating out the x, like here and here, and remembering there is a minus sign here in front of the unit variable cost times x, we get something like this. Uh, so here's the x, and then in the parentheses we have the unit price minus the unit variable cost. And then we have the fixed cost left as minus fixed cost that goes over here. So here is our profit model in terms of x. And then plug in the given data, like $5 for unit price, and $2 for the unit variable cost, and $3,000 for the fixed cost, uh, gives us this expression. And then just simple math gives us 3x minus 3,000 for our profit function. Now that we have the profit formula, for any value, we could calculate the profit. In addition, for any profit level we want, we could figure out the sales volume needed to achieve that profit. So we set the profit, this function, equal to some value, and then solve for the x. For the break-even volume, we ask, what is x when profit is equal to 0? So we set p of x equal to 0, and then solve for uh, x. Now, profit is 3x minus 3,000. And we set that equal to 0, and uh, that gives us x equal to what? Well, I think it's pretty obvious, 1,000 thousand units. So here is our answer to the first question. And the second question was, 
uh, we wanted to know what does it take to make profit of $2,400. So it's 3x minus 3,000 is equal to 2,400 and that gives us 3x is equal to uh, 2,400 and then plus 3,000, 5,400 and then we divide both sides by 3 that gives us 1,800. So 1,800 units need to be produced in order to make a profit of $2,400. Let's take a look at the second example of a mathematical model. Uh, this is an optimization example, which means we're concerned with maximizing or minimizing something. Uh, here, Nowlin wants to decide how many storage cases to produce given that there's a limited amount of plastic. There is only 800 ounces of plastic available this week, and each unit requires half an ounce of plastic. To maximize the profit this week, how many units should be produced? You will probably say, well, just make as many as you can, and you'll be right. But to formally state the problem, we would write it like this. We want to maximize the profit. Recall the profit function was 3x minus 3,000. So that was a profit given the limit on plastic and the limit is expressed here as a constraint and here is the limit the available amount and this represents the amount of plastic used uh, since to make one unit requires half ounce of plastic to make x units requires one half times x ounces of plastic so here it says the amount of plastic used must be less than equal to no more than uh, the available amount which is 800 ounces. In addition we tack on this additional constraint that says you cannot make negative amount of the storage cases so that is x has to be greater than equal to zero. Now you and I know that we cannot physically make negative amount of something but the computer doesn't know that and a lot of times we use the computer to solve the problem so we need to include this kind of constraint explicitly in our model. This problem is actually very simple, so you don't need the computer. We could just say, well, the more storage cases you make, that is higher the x value, the higher the profit will be. So we want to make as many as we can given the limit on the plastic. So we solve this expression, half of x less than or equal to 800, uh, and which means x is less than or equal to 1600 because you know, we multiply each side by 2 and since, since you want to maximize the number of units made uh, we want to let x be equal to the maximum allowed 1600. So the answer is we should produce 1600 units this week. We can think of modeling process as a sequence of steps. We define the problem, that is, we state the question we want to answer. We collect the data we need, develop the model, and then solve the model and implement the solution. For example, in the optimization example here, the first step, the problem is over here. Now, what is the question we're trying to answer? We want to maximize the profit for the week and how many units should be produced. Uh, so here is our problem. And the second step, we collect the data. Well, here are the data given, but like the numbers, 800 ounces of plastic, uh, half an ounce of plastic is required for each unit, and also the numbers that were used to get the uh, profit function, like $3,000 fixed cost and $3 the contribution margin. Uh, the data are given, all these numbers are, are the data that were collected. Third step was to develop the model. So here is a model. And the fourth step is to solve uh, for the best solution. And so here it is, the solving step. And the last step was to implement the solution. And so we make a recommendation and hopefully our recommendation will be used by the management. It is useful to think of a model as something with inputs and outputs. The model could be a formula, 
or a set of formulas, an algorithm, or a computer software. In the example we discussed, the model is the profit formula. Inputs, here are the inputs, are the numbers and variables that go into the model. Some inputs are parameters you cannot control. Now, like the variable cost, selling price, and things like that. Some inputs are decision variables, the values you could control, like the x value in the optimization model. The output is a result of the model, the bottom line number you're interested in. Here the output is the profit value. So we put in the input parameters like selling price, uh, variable cost, uh, fixed cost, and so forth, and, the, and the decide on how many to produce, uh, put them into the model, and we'll be able to calculate the profit. If all the parameters like selling price, variable cost, and fixed cost are known, uh, then we call the model deterministic. But if not all the parameters are known, then we call the model stochastic. We will deal with both deterministic and stochastic models in this class. Well, you might ask, well, if measurement science has something to do with using mathematical models and numbers, isn't that the same as statistics? And we already took statistics, so what are we doing here? Well, let me explain how measurement science is different from statistics. Statistics, or data analysis, has to do with interpreting data. You're given a bunch of numbers, usually in a table format, and you try to make heads or tails out of these numbers. You might compute the averages, standard deviation, and try to identify if there's a relationship between the variables. Now, measurement science has more to do with making decisions using the data and it uses the result of the data analysis as an input. And it uses a specialized mathematical models. Here are a couple of examples. In finance, uh, in statistics, what you might do is, given historical prices of the stocks, let's say here like A, B, C, D, um, and then we have the years here and the prices here in the data, uh, and then from this, we might compute uh, like things like mean return, risk measures like betas, and, and so forth for uh, the stocks. Now, in management science, we would take those results from statistics, like the risks and the returns of the stocks, and then put them into the management science model to decide how much to invest in each stock to achieve a projected return of 10% while minimizing risk. So there's some kind of objective and then some kind of constraint, and given those, we make a decision. As another example, uh, in marketing, uh, perhaps you might be given data on the advertising dollars and the sales for different products throughout the years, and you might use statistics to build a regression equation relating the sales to the advertising dollars, because, well, the more money you spend advertising, the higher the sales should be, so there should be some relationship between those two, sales and advertising. Now in measurement science, given these regression equations, uh, we use those in our model to decide you know, how much money to allocate in advertising to each of the products given the total advertising budget for all the products. Here's a brief description of the topics we'll cover in this class. In decision analysis, Given the uncertain future events, we learn how to choose the best course of action by computing expected payoffs of different alternatives. This means for each alternative, we will compute the expected value uh, using the probabilities of different events. In forecasting, uh, given the data from the past, historical data, we will learn how to predict the future sales. In linear programming, we will be given constraints like limited resources, limited demand, uh, and so forth. We we'll choose a decision that will maximize the profit or minimize the cost. This has to do with choosing the best course of action given the explicit constraints. We will also learn some project scheduling. Here, given a complex project involving lots of different tasks, we will learn how to schedule the tasks so that the entire project could be completed in the shortest possible time. Monte Carlo simulation, given we have a situation where 
Uh, some parameters are unknown, like the, you might not know um, how much customer demand will be for your new product. We will estimate the expected profit for each alternative by simulating lots of different scenarios. Uh, so simulation is used when there is some uncertainty around the data. So simulation would be considered stochastic modeling. Management science could be considered a part of a broad field of analytics, which means data-based decision-making. There are three types of analytics. One is descriptive, where we ask what happened, what is going on with our business. And this involves reporting, uh, core data queries, data modeling and visualization, executive dashboards, and so forth. Predictive analytics asks the question, what could happen? So it has to do with making predictions. So looking at the data to forecast the future, building regression models to predict what would happen to the sales if we increase the advertising budget, for instance. Prescriptive analysts ask the question, what is the best course of action? So instead of just asking what's going on, what could happen, it actually tells you what to do. And that involves methods like simulation and optimization and uh, linear programming is actually one of the optimization methods. You can see that the level of sophistication increases as we go down from descriptive to predictive to prescriptive. When you say the term analytics, a lot of people think of it as more of a this level, descriptive, just figuring out what's going on using the data. But the analytics become much more powerful when we could use the data and uh, management science type models uh, to actually figure out what is the best course of action. And it has been shown that the organizations that use higher level of analytics, that is a prescriptive kind of analytics, would perform much better than the organizations that are stuck at the lower level of analytics. The tools that are available in management science are mostly in the prescriptive area. And so even if you don't become an expert in measure science, it's important to be aware of these tools. For the last item, I would like to discuss why you're here. Most likely you're here because it's a required course. So I'd like to talk about what you would get out of this class. This course will help you become familiar with the quantitative techniques that are widely used in business. This one course will not make you a quantitative analyst, but you need to know some basics to get along. Even if you are not an accountant, for instance, you need to know basic things like you know, what are the debits, what are the credits. Similarly, you need some basic vocabulary so that you won't be lost when you talk to the people that work in the management science area. Businesses are increasing their use of data, and you need to be able to speak the language, even if you don't do the analysis yourself. It will also help you become intelligent consumers of management science. You might be able to recognize a situation that calls for use of management science and get the right people to work on it. You need to be able to communicate with the people who do the work so that you could understand their recommendations and decide whether to accept them. In addition, this course will help you well, become smarter. It will help you build logical thinking skills, understand how the data can be used, how the elements are logically related, it will help you develop ways to approach quantitative decision-making problems, like determine what's the objective, what are the constraints, what are the inputs I could control, and what are those I cannot control. Last but not the least, it will help you build Excel skills. We will be using Excel as a tool for much of our analysis. And as you know, having good spreadsheet skills is critical for employment. And this course will help you practice those skills.